Hello, hello! Blartanian here, with Hallowed Depths, Part 7, the Arden Crevasse Shinryu fight. We're bringing an all green, one short sword, two great sword team, featuring Gabranth, Sephiroth, and Galif. Before we get too deep into it, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Both do me big favors, we're almost a thousand subscribers, which feels wild to me. So if you want to be a part of that journey, by all means, uh, hop aboard. I try to post uh, community evaluations, or character evaluations, and little things on community posts to just give a little something extra for the subscribers. There's only so much you can do on YouTube, but I try to make it somewhat special. Um, anyway, what do we got going on here? We got the Death Gaze. Ooh, scary. Uh, good character design. I mean, you know, it's from, what, FF6, I think? Um, scary enemies with uh, some interesting mechanics going on here, which we're going to mostly trivialize. <laughs> um, but... Uh, for starters, I guess we should talk about the team idea here. The team is very basic, because the force weakness we're using here, uh, using that little uh, code thing that we can input, is we have to deal a melee attack that breaks, you know, selling Arden. However, there are actually three FRs at this point, I think, off the, off the top of my head, that do that. Arden, Vayne, which we already used, and Gabronth. So Gabronth is here to fill that gap. I should mention I used Vayne in my other run, because I, there was a Dispel component, component on there, in, like, in the boss that I was trying to hit using Van Vanilla's fair with Vayne, but uh, it ended up being completely irrelevant. Anyway, this is, but this is actually kind of an old-school team for me, or, or relatively to Shinryu. Uh, I used it, I think, for, uh, for Odin, and I've used it here and there, mostly off-camera, actually, but uh, it's a favorite team of mine that I haven't gotten to bust out in a while, because Gabronth kind of <laughs> isn't that great. But it's okay. Uh, Gabronth and Sephiroth are mostly just here to facilitate Galuf, who completely poops all over the stage. It's really kind of kind of ridiculous. Um, but it's okay. They all, they all, they're all green too, so we can hit that green crystal requirement. It's just, you know, the thing with Crevasse is like it's, as I mentioned in the other video, it's using good units to carry kind of jank units through the fight. And in that case, that's, uh, that's what we got going on here. So what do we got going on anyway, as far as mechanics? We got a couple of thresholds where they, or the force, they, you know, they become, I think they're undelayable, unlaunchable, undeletable, you know, the drill. Um, actually, they're not undeletable, that's the other bosses. But they have these health thresholds, you see. The health thresholds. Oh, I should mention, uh, they do have, well, Jesus, I'm just all over the place, aren't I? Um, they do that rip plus attack once they're over 50% on the threshold meter, which ignores, uh, it, HP resistance, or HP damage resistance. The idea being, it's, you know, selling Golbez's Brave Freeze. That said, uh, it isn't a guaranteed hit, so Galif just kind of laughs at it, because it's a free opportunity to get that extra counter proc in. Um, there we go. we're gonna actually go ahead and... We got really lucky, because before we got his evasion set up, they hit Galif with a turn rate down. And they have the speed boost, so you can see, look at all the turns they're taking. This is gonna be really funny. Um... Uh, this is going to make Gabronth look like an actual proper off-turn FR. Uh, please, when he gives his board, gives his board let, let him get boost on break, uh, off-turn break. It just feels so bad that it doesn't. Uh, that's like his one job, is to get boost on break, and he doesn't do that when it's off-turn. Um, there we go. We use the Rydia Call to survive there, because that's actually a very scary attack. That's a double dump HP like swipe thing that uh, will definitely mess you up if it hits uh, even just two people. So we use Rydia Call to dodge it. The annoying thing about their force time is it's six turns of them being immortal. So that's something we just kind of have to sit through, which isn't amazing, but what are you going to do? Except, well, we would have had to sit through it, uh, but we brought Gabronth. In the previous fight, we just kind of ignored the force time. Here, you have to kind of... Oh, f fun fact, Leo actually ignores their HP damage resistance. Um, but there we go. Um, Gabronth is here to break them with the best FR animation in the game. Check this out. It's so good. Ow, ow. Um, <laughs> uh, there we there we have it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the Sephiroth first. And uh, so the actual the mechanic of this fight that's actually pretty interesting is you see look at all those health thresholds they have on their HP bar. Every time you hit one of those thresholds, they do something pretty nasty, usually involving uh, dropping annoying debuffs on you. We don't want that to happen, and so Galuf is gonna be dodging and Sephiroth and Gabronth would be dodging with Rydia Call, but only twice, so we used Lena's base call, which should keep us nice and safe for the entirety of this uh, this here adventure. We have to be a little bit careful here, making sure we don't screw up the break order, because if we hit them, break them both, then they're going to lose all those delicious stacked turns they have. 
and we're relying heavily on Galuff getting counter after counter after counter after counter, which is why we're not going to use his EX there. But you see here, this is perfect. Look at this. Unfortunately, all of Gabron's stuff, as mentioned, is not off-turn FR stuff, so we're not going to be able to boost the gauge here, but we'll be able to deal 300% bonus counters for free, and that's that's just going to be tremendous. Um, the other thing is, every one of these thresholds we pass, they're going to be doing a trigger attack, which Galif, as you can see here, is going to dodge and then counter, which lowers their health, bringing them closer to the next threshold. You see, you see how this is going to work. This is just going to get real good, real good. Um, it's going to feel, yeah, no, this is just going to chew through them. We do have to time things a little bit. It's very important, or at least helpful, that Galif got that speed down. And we are going to refresh Sephiroth's buff here. It's okay that we b break them simultaneously a couple times, because we do want the bonus to be high when Galif is countering. We just it, 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 There's a balancing act here to make sure that you're boosting the gauge while also making sure the enemies aren't getting pushed so far back that, like, you see those stack turns they have coming up? We don't want to make, we don't want the force time to run out before they have a chance to take all those turns. Yeah, just look, oh man, countering units, Jesus, Galif, go, go, go. Um, Leo Call, of course, giving just a little bit of extra damage, just a little extra oomph, because obviously a, uh, a debuff would be su super useful here, because they would mostly just kind of chew their way through it with all the turns they're taking. So I figured, hey, Leo will give us just a little bit of extra pizzazz on our damage. Um, even if it totals like a single HP dump for every 10 turns they take or something crazy, it, it, it all adds up. Um, I will say this fight's definitely better, in my opinion, than the other crevasse fight we had, which we you know, touched upon a bit briefly. There was no real way to avoid losing a turn there, but it's okay. Lena call keeping us safe, and you'll see it actually keeps the radio call from going off too, which is kind of handy, because it's dodging the debuffs before the radio call dodges the attack. So that's nice. Um, there definitely is more going on here, but it's completely trivialized by Galif, and probably by Edge too, if you happen to want to use Edge. Just, you know, Galif works better here because there's no dagger crevasse codes for this event. So I'm sure when these guys come back, Edge will be uh, just a dope fella to bring. So we have one turn left. Um, we're going to see if we can't uh, get Brother Summon to do some work for us, so we're going to go ahead and blow them up. Get Reaper Rise to trigger, which is awesome, because that means Galif goes again. Uh, 20, right on the line. Okay, well, Sephiroth... It's okay. Sephiroth will push him below and trigger one last Galif counter fueled by that force time. Damn, that was a lot of damage. Okay, we're going to close this out now. Um, overall, this event... I mean, it was an event. I don't... It wasn't the special pizzazzy thing that I think it was last time. Maybe it was just because everyone was so hyped about Garnet. I don't know. The Garnet cycle was pretty exciting. Here it just is like, oh, I guess it's an event for Arden. Like, I feel more... I was more excited about, like, the fight we had for Lena that was just... Lena's LD that was just, like, a single good fight as opposed to these kind of, eh. I don't know. I'm kind of lukewarm on Crevasse right now. Come back, dare to defy. I miss you. Anyway, thank you for watching through the end. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you in the next video, which will probably for the next cycle um but anyway that'll be it oh and the other teams will be in a community post for the rest of the event <laughs> adios